Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Christina Kent and I'm an oil painter based out of San Francisco. Today I'm going to show you how I use color studies to improve my paintings. So here's the image we're going to do a color study of today. It's based on a picture I took of the streets of San Francisco. Uh, so let's check it out. So I love doing color studies, and if you're not familiar with the concept, the idea is basically to do a small sketch of a painting, focusing on getting the colors right, so it's, it's less about getting all the details or even about getting all of the proportions correct, and more about um, getting the colors right and the composition um, on a small scale so that you can later do a painting on a larger scale if you like. And I think color studies are a really great way for painters to improve their skills quickly. And I should also say here that I'm using acrylic gouache in my sketchbook. I really like acrylic gouache, especially for sketches, because it dries very quickly. It can layer a lot like oil paints, so it doesn't reactivate with water like regular gouache does. Um, and so it's easy if you put one color down and it's not right. Um, you can almost immediately paint over it and put a different color. So it's really, really forgiving, which is great for doing experiments like these color studies. Um, and it dries really quickly, which, which of course is really convenient for a sketchbook. One cool thing about color studies is, like the name suggests, it's a great way to practice color. Um, it's just a really good habit to practice mixing colors, matching colors to what you see, whether it's in a photograph or whether you're painting from life. Um, and then also to learn how different colors interact with each other once you actually put them on paper or on canvas or whatever medium you're using. I mean, whatever surface you're using. And I think color, color is, is, it's such an interesting and complex thing. On the one hand, colors seem very simple. I mean, most of us, since we're children, we've drawn or painted or we, you know, we've interacted with color. We know what our favorite colors are. We know what colors we like to wear or we like to um, have in our homes. And so in, in one sense, color seems very simple and familiar, but in another sense, color is extremely complex and way more nuanced than we may have been led to believe. And I've noticed this in my own experience when I'm doing a still life painting, or really when I'm painting anything, um, I might think that I know what color something is, but then when I actually try to paint it, when I actually say, okay, let me, let me create that color and the feeling of that color, the effect of that color onto my canvas, when I actually try to do that, I realize I don't actually know what color something is. And it's actually a lot more complex than what I thought it would be. And even things as simple as, say, a, a lemon, you might think, well, a lemon is yellow. I know what color a lemon is. But what kind of yellow is it? And is it really yellow? If you're painting a lemon in a dark room and there's a lot of cool evening light, maybe that lemon is actually going to be more of a green than a yellow. It just, it really depends on what the circumstances are. And I think that's one of the things that for me makes painting always just this really fascinating adventure. And it gives me the sense of discovery because when I'm looking at something you know, you just realize that things are way more complex than they appear at first glance. And I think that's absolutely fascinating. And that's where the color studies come in. So you can take an idea that you have for a painting, whether it's a still life or, um, yes, you're, you're doing plein air or you're painting from a photograph like I am here, um, you can look at your subject and think, okay, what are the actual colors here? And can I replicate them onto my surface? And the nice part about doing it in this small format is you can work out a lot of the complexity of the color and also get a sense for how they work together in the image as a whole in these really small thumbnail sketches like the one I'm doing here in my sketchbook before you take it to a larger painting where now you're dealing with a lot more factors, not only size, the time it takes to mix all the colors, um, but also the level of detail that um, could make it a lot more difficult. And and so when I am approaching doing a larger painting, it can be really helpful to have this color study done first so that I've worked out at least some of the components 
um, of the image before I go to the larger painting. So I think color studies really can make your work a lot stronger. But another reason I like to do color studies is as a form of experimentation. I make these small thumbnail sketches and I don't necessarily know if I want to make them into a larger painting. Like with this piece, this is actually a little different from the type of work um, that I usually do in that it doesn't have a lot of super strong light and shadow. There a lot of most of the buildings actually are in shadow and there's just some of the last light of day that's coming from behind the buildings. Um, so I wasn't quite sure if this is something that I wanted to do a larger painting of. And if if I only did large paintings, I probably would throw this idea out. But instead, I am using the color study as a way to experiment with this idea that could work out really well, but maybe maybe it doesn't. But because I'm doing a color study, it's not super detailed, it's on a really small scale, it's just like a very low stakes way to try out this new idea. And as you can see, I'm using a lot of simplification here. I have just suggested a few windows in some of the buildings and a few of the architectural details, but for the most part, I'm really trying to focus on keeping the shapes really simple and conveying what are the main colors that I'm seeing and what is the overall sense of light in the image. And if you like, you could leave the color study. Like, I, I think I could have stopped at this point. I think I hit most of the major colors that were important for the image, but I chose to go in and add a bit more detail just to see where I could take this image. Um, but, but really, I think if you want to learn and you want to grow and you want to use this as an exercise, then adding on the little bits of extra detail, that, that part is more optional. I think the most important part it's less about creating a pretty sketch, which I think at this point now I'm kind of um, trying to make it more beautiful, um, but it's really more about getting the colors right and, and working through the overall color composition of the image. One thing that really drew me to this image was the strong colors of some of the buildings. So we have this really deep purple building that is on the right hand side of the image and then we have this orangey yellow building that's on the left hand side and this bright orange yellow dead end sign that is also in the image that I just I thought that that was such a a nice little feature um, but I really liked the colors of these buildings and then how everything else in the image is very gray. So we have some saturated colors that kind of draw the eye, but then we have all these grays where we can really explore, um, I think, you know, gray can be the most complex of colors because it's, it's such a confusing and kind of hard to pin down mix of colors and it can be really, really complex. So when I was working on this, I was thinking about how to how to really highlight the complexity of the grays. And I also wanted to bring in some of the saturated notes from the purples and the, the yellow orange into those grays as well to kind of give the overall image a sense of color harmony too. So that's like one thing that I, I like to do when I'm planning out my colors is sometimes I'll add a color from one part of the image into another part, even if it wasn't there in the photo, um, just to just to connect those different parts of the images. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't work at all, and then I and then I change course. Um, but it's just something to think about. Yeah, it, in the end, I really couldn't help myself in um, just adding some of the final details to this piece to to give it a little bit more of a finished look. Um, I I really wanted to get the power lines in because I thought those those definitely gave it that urban feel. And then also refining some of the edges around um, the sign itself and suggesting the writing. And I tried to keep the timeline pretty short for this sketch. I think I spent about 45 minutes on it in total. Um, I would recommend if you're doing color studies, you could set an even shorter time limit and not go to the same level of detail that I've gone to here. I got a little carried away, but it was it was a lot of fun. But it, I would say if, if you want to do color studies, um, then really you could even capture probably most of um, the the important insights and the practice that can probably be captured in 15 or 20 minutes of very quick work.
And of course, if you end up really liking it, then you always have the option to take it a little farther. But like I said, I think one of the brilliant aspects of color studies is that they're they're just very low stakes. You plan to keep them really small. Um, if possible, work with a large brush so that you're not tempted to get into the details and um, and give yourself a time limit so that you you can quickly move on to the next thing if that's what you want to do. You could even set a goal to do, um, say, three color studies in an afternoon rather than doing one finished painting. And you might feel like you learn a lot more actually from doing those three color studies and trying out different ideas and different things than spending the full time on one finished painting. Anyway, here's the final outcome. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think I did capture the overall colors and feeling of the scene. What about you? Have you done color studies before? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon. If you like my art, if you like my videos and you want to help me make more, check out my Patreon at the link below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.